Thank you, Amy. Let us join together now in our opening prayer based on Psalm 25 on the screen and also in the bulletin. To you, O love, I lift up my soul. O heart within my heart, in you I place my trust. Let me not feel unworthy. Let not fear rule over me. Yes, let all who open their hearts savor you and bless the earth. Compel me to know your ways. O oh, love, instruct me upon your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for through you will I know wholeness. I shall reflect on your light both day and night. I know of your mercy, compassionate one, and of your steadfast love. You have been with me from the beginning. Forgive the many times I have walked away from you, choosing to walk alone. With your steadfast love, once again, companion me along your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Our first scripture reading today is from 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through wisdom, or excuse me, to one is given through the Spirit of the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. And then from the book of Luke, chapter 3, verses 15 through 17, then chapters 21 and 22. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming and I am not unworthy to tie, untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended upon them in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved, and with you I am well pleased. May this be the word of the Lord for us today. Will you pray with me? Wonderful, gracious God. Thank you for your word to us today. And now may the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be an offering to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I have a cartoon this morning. Next slide. There we go. So Charlie Brown has his mitt and he's walking away from Lucy and she says, where are you going, Charlie Brown? He's Peppermint Patty's team is short a glove, so I'm walking over to lend them mine. You're kidding. Don't you think they're taking advantage of you? 
He says, no, I'm doing it because I want to. And she yells after him, what are you, some kind of mystic? <laughs> Maybe Charlotte Brown is a mystic. Choosing to be generous and to think of someone besides himself, he becomes part of the movement of love. Isn't that what John the Baptist was preaching over 2,000 years ago? He called his people to new lives of generosity and preparation for the coming of the Messiah. He offered them baptism with water as a sign of their repentance, their willingness to change their lives. People came to him in the desert to find new lives and hope. Luke tells us that Jesus became part of this movement of love, this movement of his people. He went out to the desert and received the water baptism John offered. In doing this, Jesus makes a connection to the movement for positive change in his community. He humbles himself to join this movement of repentance and connection with God. We know that he was a pious young man from the story Luke tells of him as a young person, around 13 or so, going to the temple with his family and staying there during a festival. He stays behind in the temple. And when his harried, worried mother and father find him, he says to them, where else would I be but in my father's house? So it makes sense that he would want to be part of John's revival movement. So the first thing we realize from John, Luke's story of, John, of Jesus' baptism is that his baptism connected him with this movement of repentance and new life among his people. He did not set himself above the people, but he was part of them. He wants his life to be in solidarity with the humble people around him and their needs and their spiritual lives. This is true of our baptisms also. Baptism does not make us above or better than other people or anyone else. Rather, it connects us with the movement of God to offer grace and well-being, forgiveness to all people. Baptiz baptism is an action sign that we, that we are repentant, humble, and open to the movement of God's grace, just like Jesus. In baptism, I become the same as any helpless baby who comes to the font or any great saint who comes to the font. Secondly, in Luke's story, after he was baptized and was praying, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him bodily like a dove. What is interesting to me about this part of the story is that Jesus experiences the Holy Spirit as a dove, not like fire that John had just predicted, really. Remember, John said he would come to bring baptism of power and fire. And here, Jesus has the experience of a dove. John the Baptist had a vision of the Messiah as a man of judgment and fire. And yet Jesus, after his baptism, receives the Holy Spirit as a dove, a traditional symbol of peace. It is a gentler vision than John's. Clearly, for John and Jesus, the coming of the Messiah includes the experience of the Holy Spirit. Jesus' prayer opened the heavens and the Spirit came to him. It was a Holy Spirit of peace, not flaming judgment. 
I wondered and thought about these two symbols of the Holy Spirit, fire and the dove, and what they mean for us. Could it be that sometimes our baptism opens us, us to the Spirit as fire, and other times as a dove of peace? Certainly Jesus was sometimes passionate and fiery, and other times against, he was passionate and fiery against hypocrisy and injustice. But he was also compassionate and a man of peace, not violence. The next time Luke uses the image of the Spirit coming, he comes as fire in Acts 2 to inspire and, and energize the disciples to continue the risen Christ ministry in the world. Sometimes I think we need the fire of the Spirit, the passion for justice and concern for others that moves us to action, sometimes heroic actions. I think of the fiery speeches of Martin Luther King Jr., who we're celebrating, especially tomorrow, and others like Desmond Tutu, that inspire people to continue to work for justice in their communities, inspire people to continue the bus boycott in Montgomery, Alabama, or to walk across a bridge to the threat of fire coming through those hoses in Burlingham. Archbishop Desmond Tutu has said, Righteous anger is usually not about oneself. It's about those one sees being harmed and when one wants to help. Yet other times, the Holy Spirit comes upon us more like a dove, a peaceful presence of reassurance and calm. This experience connects us to that deep love God has for each of us and all the earth. It helps us to find the quiet center in which we can move and love and make changes just like Jesus. Like the night not too long ago at Egan Warming Center when two men got up and started yelling at each other and were about ready to get into a fight. But some of us, led by the Spirit, stayed calm and helped them to separate and to calm down. But even more, that same calm, that same compassion, listened to one of the men, discovered that he was in extreme pain because of an earache and worked to get him help. The spirit of the dove descended for the rest of the evening. So just like Jesus, our baptism is a connection to the work of the Spirit, Holy Spirit in our lives. When we are baptized or when we reaffirm our baptism, we open ourselves to this gift of the Spirit. We recognize that it has been part of our lives all along and receive its gifts of passion or fire or peace, the dove. Finally, the story, Luke's story of Jesus' baptism concludes with a voice from heaven, God's word to Jesus, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. This experience connects Jesus to who he is. He perhaps had been told some of the stories of his birth, of Simeon and Anna's words about him in the temple when he was a little baby. He had a sense of God as his father, yet this, this is the first time in Luke that Jesus hears directly himself from God about who he is. Whatever happens, this is a foundational moment for Jesus. And of course, for us who listen and learn from the story, the one we follow, the one we follow through baptism is the Son of God. Jesus' way and life is pleasing to God, and so following him is pleasing to God. But more than that, our baptism also connects us with who we truly are. Because of Jesus, we are also children of God, his beloved ones. 
This is the identity that our baptism proclaims to us and to the world. You are now part of the family of God. This is an internal connection. You are a beloved child. And an external connection. You are now part of a family. The Church of Jesus Christ. In our individualistic culture, we tend to emphasize the individual part of this equation, which is fine. It is good to realize our belovedness and realize our own worth is dependent upon God's love and value of us, not anything society says. This is especially important if you have been abused or put down in your life. It is good news. Yet it's also important to realize the external connection is also true. When we are baptized, we become part of a church community, a down-to-earth, everyday local church, and the spiritual community of Jesus' followers down through the ages. We may not always want this to be true. <laughs> Sometimes we turn away from this community of Christ because it hasn't always been perfect, or we're not sure sometimes of our own belief. Yet this connection with the love of God and the community of Christ is not something we do. It is a reality that God gives to us. As our baptism liturgy proclaims, you, we are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. After this service today, we will be having a memorial service for a man named Joey Spoon. And some of you might remember, um, was baptized here a couple months ago, um, he came to me at one of the meals outside and said, I am sick, I have liver cancer, and I want to get my life right with God, and I want to be baptized. So we arranged for him to come, and he came to a service, and then the day he was supposed to get baptized, he wasn't able to come. But we just hung on in there, and he, finally, he did come one Sunday, and we baptized him. Now, that's not the end of the story. <laughs> You know, we didn't, we didn't really see him again in worship. So that feels like, well, how could we be connected to him, you know? But the end of the story is that when I went to see him at the hospice house where he was for a while, he had put on his door his baptismal certificate. That baptism meant something to him. And, he, and then when he died, his significant other came to us and said, can you help us remember him? and have a memorial. So the connection inside and external was there, even for Joey. So the little story of Jesus' baptism in the Gospel of Luke shows us some important meanings of baptism for our lives. Baptism connects us in humility with all people who need God. Baptism points us to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And baptism reminds us of who we are as God's children and our connection to God's family. This sacrament of the church, this ritual act, has deep layers of meaning for us and our witness to Christ. I don't remember my baptism. I was just a little tiny baby, you know, under six weeks old. But I know from asking questions of the story that I get, we gathered in little church in Indiana. It was my father and my mother and, and a friend of my father's from seminary from Japan. This was in 1956. And the district superintendent who did the baptism. I don't remember it. But then I realized that most of us don't remember our first couple years. How many of you remember before age two? You'd be very unusual. <laughs> but you know what? Psychologists and, and studies now show that those first two years are crucial 
to who we become. That tender loving care we receive when we are just that little baby in arms makes a difference for the rest of our lives. Help us to grow to be healthy human beings. That early love connection with others and that tender love and care is so crucial. So God was at work in my baptism and in maybe in your, in your baptisms, whether I remember it or not. Over the years, I've found that reaffirming my baptism, asking my parents about the story and, and has strengthened my faith. I invite each of us today to come to the waters of our baptism font or the bowl of water that you have at home and touch the water and reaffirm your baptism. And if you've not gone through the ritual of baptism, I would be happy to talk with you about doing so. Let us come trusting that God is still offering to us the gifts of baptism, grace and forgiveness, identity as God's children, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
life's final war with pain and then as death gives way to Because he lives And life is worth the living Just because he lives Join with me in our baptismal covenant. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We're incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation, given new birth through water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism. In knowledge, that what God is doing for us and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness and reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? I do. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? Well, <laughs> excuse me. That's why I wear a mask. <laughs> Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. You believe in God the Father. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. Let us pray, eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which, you're, of your, which you promised. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit by this gift of water. Call to our remembrance the grace declared to us in our baptism. For you have washed away our sins. You clothed us with righteousness throughout our lives. 
that dying and rising with Christ, we may share in his final victory. Amen. I invite you to come forward and touch the water to reaffirm your baptism and to remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen.